There is an imprint of the traveler's experiences in this object. Images, emotions, I... I will try to interpret as best I can. I feel... Unity. Peace. A sense of belonging and home. Here. Inside the Traveler. There is completion. A sense of duty fulfilled. There is another... Realm? Or space? No. A state of being. Union with the Traveler. Light returned and... Now memory as well. An eternity within the Traveler. With all Guardians who experienced their final deaths. An afterlife. That's... All I could make out. Cade spoke of his experiences after death as peaceful. And as if he wasn't alone. Perhaps there's truth to this. That there can be... Something at the end. For Guardians? I don't know if I want the Traveler's Heaven. If the people I hope to find won't be there waiting for me. We cannot be sure of anything. These visions are... difficult to parse. Do not give up hope yet, Commander. Echoes of the Traveler's experiences vibrate within this object. I can feel them, convey <laughs> as much as I can to you. This experience is chaotic, changing, mutable, matter and consciousness mingling, dreams and memories given shape and form. There, there's something churning, boiling in the traveler's blood, Transformation, light and dark, a harmony. All that which is immaterial is material. That which could be is. Not born from a wish, but born from unconscious thought. The Traveler has been changed. Changed in ways we cannot undo. Not corrupted, not wounded. Transformed. And that change is still taking shape. It's happening right now. Collisions of light and dark have always birthed new, previously unimaginable possibilities. We awoke and were born of such a collision during the collapse. Time and space itself were rent apart in our birth. But to happen here, to happen to the Traveler, what will the aftermath of such a transformation be? What will be born of the union of light and dark? A new era rises in this shadow of uncertainty. I can feel the Traveler's presence radiating from this object. Memories and experiences, emotions and ideas blooming in my mind. I see so many cities, so many peoples basking in my light. They study me, and in their discoveries they come to understand the universe. I am a blueprint for them to follow, a canvas upon which the mysteries of the universe are written. These little gardeners are such careful stewards of fragility, but then they begin kneeling. They plead, beg, demand. I do not know what to do. There is confusion, helplessness, guilt. There's nothing more. Does this mean that the great machine does not wish to be worshipped? I don't know if I'd interpret it that way. It Maybe more a lack of frame of reference. It doesn't understand reverence or worship. But that also doesn't mean it can't learn. But that it's still trying to understand us. Or... Maybe it never will. Does that invalidate faith? I do not know. It provides. 
begs the question. And I suppose it is on me to ponder the answer. For the truest answers lie within ourselves. The Traveler's life resonates from this object. Experiences I can try to interpret. I am frightened, but at peace. I am giving away pieces of myself, slicing them off like fingers from a hand. They're ghosts. With each one created, I lose a part of myself. A sacrifice of faith and a hope against hopelessness. They are like stars in the night sky. Constellations of my martyrdom. Traveling until they begin to go out. One by one. And, and with each one's passing, a part of me returns. There's a theory among ghosts that if we die, we return to the light of the Traveler. I don't know where that belief started. Maybe it's just something inside of us. A reassurance that even if we fall, there's something waiting for us. A reunion with our Creator. And in that, maybe we make it whole again. I wish I could tell you for sure. These visions are difficult to interpret. Still, it's nice to think, perhaps, all the ghosts we've lost, Sagira, Sundance, Taj, they moved on to somewhere else. Their job completed. I like that too, ghost. I feel impressions of the traveler's experiences in this object. I can see them. I will try to interpret as best as I can. This impression is jumbled, faded, ancient. I see stars, a haze of cosmic energy, carnelian and jade whirling into infinity, fear, hope. Then an abrupt severance, something lost, or someone? It isn't clear. Dust clings to the air like motes of starlight, glittering. A new distinction between what is and what was, but a tether remains indivisible. Light casting a shadow, and shadow defining the shape of light. Then... No. Nothing. It's gone. I'm sorry. You did your best. Thank you for trying. Those colors. I feel like I've seen them somewhere before. In a half-remembered dream. This may be an ancient memory of the Traveler. Something from the dawn of time. It may be so old as to have no significance. And yet... I cannot help but wonder. The Traveler's memories and experiences are imprinted on this object. I will try to translate them as best as I can. I am... afraid. Reunited with a family member? Or... no. Terrified. I... I can feel. They do not want unity. They want stagnation. No! You can't do this! I won't let you- It spreads through me. Dark fingers. Memories. Remembrance of- What is this feeling? I do not want it. I- I shed the infection, and it drops to the world below. Storms rage in my cast-off flesh. Storms of recollection. I must stop this. I'm sorry. There are 
There is no need to apologize for speaking miracles into being. Your gift is just that. Are you well? I'll be fine. Thank you, Your Majesty. Those last few experiences, the shed infection and the storms, it reminds me of the shard of the Traveler that looms over the EDZ. I thought as much myself. Perhaps this memory was of the collapse, or a fusion of several similar memories. Something for us all to discuss over tea, perhaps. The Traveler's experiences are imprinted on this object. I can feel them. Feel its emotions, see what it saw. I will try to interpret confusion, frustration, pain. Many needing voices cry out for answers, but there are none to give. They project their own aspirations onto the Traveler, but it is not what they think it is. It does not have the answers they seek. It does not remember. Memory is heavy now. It feels like dense metal, a weight around one's neck. Nothing but dread and poisonous doubt remains. It fears the act of thought. I... I can't make out anymore. Not a god. Not even silent. Just a being desperate for help. I once thought the Traveler was a foundational cornerstone of the universe. But now it feels as though it is just as afraid and uncertain as we are. Just because someone doesn't have all the answers doesn't make them any less important. Micah's vision may seem to say the Traveler didn't have answers, but that doesn't mean it sees the universe the same way we do. Perhaps it just has a hard time explaining what it sees to us. There's many ways to interpret that vision. I can feel the Traveler's experiences impressed on this object. Feel its emotions, see what it saw. I will try to interpret. There's a person, no, people. Those born in harmony and attunement with the light. A few grains of sand in a desert of time. They feel, experience things different than others. See things, visions, dreams, images, non-linear perspective. I see the speaker, Crow, me, a wave spanning time and space upon which we stand, a wave crashing on distant shores of distant gardens. I can't make sense of the rest. Waves crashing on distant shores? It feels like there's more. Something about ourselves we don't understand yet. Being a guardian is being a part of something greater. But this, perhaps, is another mystery. A larger tapestry. One we are only just becoming aware of. <laughs>